It's no surprise to anyone that 343 have been going through a lot of changes recently. Starting off with the big layoffs that happened to mainly the animations and campaign team back in early of 2023. Then in December of 2023, announcing that they're moving away from Halo Infinite to the next Halo project. Oh yeah, and the head of the entire team that's been with them forever recently leaving. So things have been changing. Well, some new information just came about what the current structure and state of 343 is right now behind the doors. And it seems like the biggest reason for these changes is efficiency. If you followed this channel or Halo News in general since the launch of Halo Infinite, you know that things have been pretty slow when it comes to updating for Halo Infinite and just Halo in general, right? Like it took us six years between Halo 5 and Halo Infinite, then Halo Infinite launches and we're just still sitting around waiting for content to come around. And that's mainly because of how large of a size 343 grew to, the engine issues, the communication breakdowns within teams that we've covered previously on the channel here, like things have been a mess. And let me just say, if you guys enjoy these type of news and informational videos, make sure to tap like and subscribe, helps out the channel a ton. Let's get right into those details. So this news comes from a very credible source of Jess Gordon over at Windows Central with an article saying that Microsoft and Activision have formed a new team within Blizzard to work on smaller AA games based on existing IPs. And obviously as a Halo fan, we've had a little taste of external IPs, right? Little smaller bits that were like, <gasps> Halo Wars 3 possibly? Don't get too excited. As this article mainly focuses on the new developments when it comes to the team creations within Microsoft, but there is a little bit of a part here about Halo and 343 Industries as we scroll a little bit further down right here in the article. It says, Halo developer 343i also taking on more streamlined single team organizational style, ditching its siloed multi-team format of yesteryear which often cited to me as having communication issues and which we've reported that on this channel we've heard this multiple times over that there have been some communication issues over at 343 industries especially during the development of halo infinite but a lot of times citing that it was the engine being a big issue a lot of tech that happening and making it very difficult to develop for halo infinite and having a streamlined live service type of game though i am very curious how a single team organizational style works with such a large game like halo and pairing this information for what i've heard internally at 343 that looking to get something out sooner rather than later makes me feel like that maybe the next halo title might not be a full-fledged halo experience but maybe a snippet or a slice of what the halo experience can be and make that into its own online experience that people can play or something like that, like a singular game mode that might be like, just think of like Star Wars Battlefront 2, but like Halo instead, but it might not have all the bells and whistles you come to expect, like a theater mode, Forge, campaign, things like that. Of course, that's my pure speculation, but I'm kind of curious how a single team organizational style could work with Halo, because there are so many large parts when it comes to making a great Halo game that one aspect doesn't really make a Halo game, but all these little parts together make what a Halo can offer. Though really these smaller double A titles are probably gonna be functioning more like what triple A used to be back in the early 2000s to 2010s. Because clearly game development has blown up exponentially in cost and time. And especially with 2024, we're seeing this being the year of double A games with like Power World and Hell Divers 2. After reading this information, to me it makes me feel like Microsoft is trying to copy what CD Projekt Red did after the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. And then basically they found that with having such large teams cooperating together, each in their own separate silos, that it felt like it was really slowing down the process of one team doing lighting, one team doing animations, one team doing like their own little parts. Rather what they did and said when they came to doing Phantom Liberty, they transformed the communication and ownership of different aspects of the, the DLC that they created. And what they decided to do is make cross-functional teams. So basically what would happen, you would have people within these smaller groups working on individual parts, but each team was able to complete an entire section of a game, right? So then, yeah, there were people who had to wear multiple hats, but were able to get stuff done more effectively as each team was on their own little kind of island to then create something to then add to the game rather than having the way for the entire ship to come to up to speed with them. Because that was the biggest issue with Halo Infinite was that they were waiting on all this tech to be de developed while they were trying to make the game at the same time and updating the engine was a huge pain point and so it slowed down production of the game a lot. But obviously with 
CD Projekt Red that you can tell that yeah, they weren't really trying to update the engine when it came to making Cyberpunk 27. What they were trying to do is improve efficiency of content creation and this is where this comes in of the cross-functional teams and you can see how different types of people were wearing different types of hats in the way they kind of put it. So then you're able to complete things more effectively rather than going through these infinite feedback loops of having like the my typical Microsoft bureaucracy of going through this manager, then that upper manager, and then that comes back down to you to go back up to an upper manager. It takes a lot of time, a lot of wasted communication time where really you just need to get the stuff done. Those saying they're going with a streamlined single team organizational style, I mean, it's kind of calls back to the glory days back in the early 2010s or classic Halo days. Of, that's kind of how the game was developed back then. You didn't have so many specialized people. I mean, yeah, you had people who were better at other aspects of making the game, but like I said, people had to jump in and where they could to help. Now, I've talked about this in previous videos as well, where you see all the top games out there nowadays, they all kind of specify into a specific thing rather than being a catch-all experience that we traditionally had with Halo, Call of Duty, say games like Battlefield, for those traditional big shooters out there, where nowadays when you look at the top games out there, most of them are going to be single type of experiences. Right? With Minecraft, you're building stuff. Fortnite, it's BR. Call of Duty, yeah, you got everything else, but come on, it's really the Battle Royale is what's keeping this game afloat right now. You also have Rainbow Six Siege. I mean, Grand Theft Auto is like one exception, but it is such a wildly different game that it's kind of tough to justify making a Grand Theft Auto game because we've heard reports that it's costing $2 billion to make. But of course, Grand Theft Auto 6 can go that route because they know that this game will just print money. It's going to be a substantial milestone experience within the gaming industry. Now, the funny thing is about hearing about this news article, right? Talking about how they want to make more double A games based on existing IPs, which I would say is a very smart idea. But Microsoft already had the golden goose, if you want to refer to it as that. And that was with Tango Gameworks right here saying, you know, because they made Hi-Fi Rush and that was very well received, gave so much positive momentum to Xbox to just close down that studio. And Jess Corden says that he was told that it was sadly just like geographical location of Japan and making inter-studio collaboration logistically difficult, which would make a lot of sense because it just doesn't make sense to close a game like Tango Gameworks Studios down when you just had them make one of the best games you've ever made on Xbox. But rounding it back to Halo just makes me wonder about what kind of game are we going to get in the future? Are we going to get multiple little projects? I mean, 343 has stated that they are working on multiple projects with the Halo franchise. Of course, that could mean multiple different things, right? A, a project could be just like a new mobile game, but not very many people would be excited about that as we've seen from the Diablo experience. Well, like I said earlier, and what I've been told, is that 343 is really focusing on trying to get something out sooner rather than later. Though you probably wouldn't get that feeling, right, from watching the Xbox game showcase where Halo was missing. It feels like Microsoft was trying to show off literally everything else that is involved with Microsoft, Bethesda, Activision, King Blizzard, besides Halo. But that thing that's really just because we weren't really going to have anything ready for Halo until probably 2026 at the earliest. So I'm assuming next Xbox showcase in 2025 is when we'll likely get some type of Halo being presented probably for a 2026, 2027 release. Just kind of depends on what they're looking to make, right? If they're looking to make a smaller project, that could benefit from a shorter ramp up hype uh, duration rather than your typical two or what we have for Halo Infinite three year hype cycle. But I would totally would be open to the idea of having a smaller Halo experience or maybe a multiplayer only experience. From what we've heard, it's going to be like a bit of an evolution of Halo Infinite, right? Not being an exact copy of it, but something that will basically play like Halo Infinite, but just a little different, which is something I would be definitely open to because, well, people loved Halo Infinite's gameplay. Why fix something that isn't broken? But that kind of seems to also be kind of the old 343's motto of, hey, let's completely change this because uh, we want to completely change it rather than have it be something that would actually be beneficial to the player base and something that players would actually want. NPR Hints was the guy who helped make Halo MCC a playable, fun experience that went way beyond everything we thought MCC could possibly be. Though I've also heard some internal rumblings that maybe not everyone at 343 really likes how Pierre is handling 343 and Halo at the moment. But I think I could just be subject to just the issue of things changing quite a bit because obviously any type of change people generally don't like. But I'm glad that things are changing over there at 343 because something needs to be done differently because how Halo Infinite was launched and how Halo games have been made in the past 
It's just ain't it, Chief. If you guys made it this far in the video, I greatly appreciate it. If you're one of those real ones, leave a green heart in the comments and we'll see who those people are in the chat. If you guys made it this far in the video as well, I hope I earned your like and subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, check out a membership here on YouTube. Get some extra little goodies for you right there as well. If you guys want to catch any videos from me recently you might have missed, say like all the changes that have come for Halo Infinite recently as well as how they actually listened to player feedback with the most recent update, well check out the videos right there. Thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.